Good morning. This is State of the Arts NYC, and this is your host, Savannah Bailey McClain. And today, we have with you a very special guest. We have Sasha Waters Freyer, who is a filmmaker and producer. Uh, Sasha, I just want to thank you for coming on to our show. Great. Now, Sasha is not only a filmmaker, but she is also the chair of photography and film at Virginia Commonwealth University. And we are here to talk with her about her new documentary on Gary Winogrand. And the documentary is called All Things Are Photographable. So, Sasha, tell us a little bit about your film. Well, I wanted to share with you one important little fact <clears throat> that I know you didn't know. I'm a Bronx girl, too. And so, oh, you did. I'm a Bronx girl, too. And so, therefore, I, I was very intrigued um, with um, Gary Winogrand because it reminded me of my childhood. And when I was a kid, we had all of these um, different kids from Eastern Europe, and we had kids um, who were from Puerto Rico. You had kids like me whose family came during the black migration from the South, and we all ended up playing together <laughs> in the streets, and we all learned to be friends and to be supportive of each other. So we were all like, you know, like, you know, that new group of kids who were, you know, a part of the education movement during the civil rights and how's this going to work. And, and we all, you know, we just had fun. We were just friends. And, and so when I saw that, I just, you know, reminisced on the times when I was a kid in the Bronx. Still feel that I'm a, a Bronx girl, the old Bronx that I remember. But uh, this was quite fascinating. So you are born in Brooklyn. So you're a Brooklyn gal. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, and I think a lot of um, reviewers, because I believe the New York Times also did a, a nice review <clears throat> on his photography work, and they were mentioning in the film, you know, that old New York that was a little gritty and um, had a lot of chutzpah to it. And, um, uh <laughs> and so a lot of us, you know, I think were drawn to to that. So, you know, I did take a lot of time to look at quite a few of his uh, photographs. And um, I just wanted to um, mention to people that they uh, can look at his photographs online. And um, the film that you have done, the documentary, which is considered a feminist documentary, which I want you to explain later, will start showing at the Film Forum on September 19th. So folks have a chance to just look at the photographs, which I think they're beautiful. And you tend to smile, and, and then you have a chance to see a lot more in your 
documentary. So tell us how did the documentary begin for you? I know why you like him, but how did you decide to go about doing this film? Okay. Okay, that's that's really cool. I think that's how a lot of, you know, documentaries get started. You know, it starts with that interest. You're interested in that subject matter. But then, you know, in 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 your film, you get to showcase somebody who kind of started something that we all deal with today with our smartphones. Everyone now is taking photographs of everything, not just family photographs, but uh, events in the streets, disasters that go on, just different sort of, you know, quirky sort of um, events or moments, I should say. And he kind of, you know, started that, but he stylized it. It got to the point where he didn't just take photographs anymore. He was able to stylize these everyday moments so that we could take that pause and appreciate the the people that he were capturing, wouldn't you say? And then he broke it into categories. I don't think a lot of people realize how meticulous he was. He actually had photographs just of women. And then he had photographs of animals, which I thought was quite intriguing. And then he had different types of photographs, I think, dealt with uh, scenes. And he meticulously... Um, as I mentioned, just gathered these various subject matters so that you could also observe them too. What do you think he wanted folks to to feel when he was collecting all of these images per categories as well? Was he trying to say, you know, let's archive our lifestyle? Um, should we archive style? Should we pay attention to what's going on in the world, that there's symmetry? What do you believe he was trying to convey? Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I mean, that's fair that he was interested in <clears throat> his own discovery um, of photography but what he ended up doing 
by photographing so many subjects as well as objects, he was able to um, really archive our life in the city and showcase um, what made New York City so special because it's not just that he took photographs and I know he went to other places around the world but when he took those photographs of New York City he showed what made New York City special at that time and I think that took my breath away because it it really made you smile and a lot of that old New York is disappearing or has disappeared or already like you know kids playing stickball in the streets or 42nd street which was you know kind of scruffy and you accepted that as a new yorker now it looks very disney like i mean it's nothing wrong with that but you also miss that scruffiness that you also knew was a part of 40 Second Street, and you accepted that, a different slice of life. So he really captured all of that element of New York City. What do you think uh, his photographs will um, do for us when we, we rev- you know, review them again and look at your documentary? How do you think people will feel? Yes. Right. It sure was. I like that, how you talked about the vitality of the street, because that is, you know, missing nowadays, um, where neighbors got to know each other. (laughs) And, you know, like I said, when I was a kid, you played with each other, and you went inside different homes. I had a friend I'll never forget. She was Japanese, and so she invited me over so I could try octopus. I never had no octopus before in my life, but it was like, okay, I'm going to try this rubbery thing. And, you know, it was the sharing of each other's lives, everyday lives. So you're sharing with me seaweed and octopus at 12 years old. And then I get to share with you some games that I've learned by playing them on the sidewalk. So there was this constant exchange. And and for me, it wasn't just games on the sidewalk. I was a handball kid. You give me a ball, a spalding, and a wall, and I was playing handball. So it was playing handball and or other kids playing stickball and other kids, you know, just running around, red light, green light, one, two, three. I remember all of those uh, games that made the block you know, so important and lively. And you're correct. Women, especially, they were going through a lot. You had the Black Power Movement, the Civil Rights Movement going on. The women's uh, movement was just bubbling up. So you had a lot of people dealing with expression and how do you harness it or how do you go about showcasing it. And that's what I felt when I looked at a lot of those photographs, this enormous energy that um, you wish you could see today. I think there's a lot of energy, but it's about 
being busy, but not so much living. Everyone is caught up on these phones that they're not having conversation. And when you see that, you remember the conversations that people used to have and the dinner parties people used to go to. Because when I was a kid, people went to dinner parties. And now when you talk about that, nobody knows what you're talking about. Do you feel the same way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You And then you had the women who would sit in the windows, and they would watch you. And if you didn't say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, your mother would get a phone call to say how disrespectful you were. <laughs> that happened to me once. I forgot to say hello to somebody, and before I got In the door, my mother was already questioning me. Why didn't you say good afternoon to such and such and so and so? And you forgot, but they were there and they watched you and they kind of looked out for you. Those were the eyes your parents needed when they were taking care of their errands too. So with your documentary, how long is this documentary? Is it about, what, two hours long? 90 minutes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is unusual because he died at 56, correct? Around 56? Wow, that's very tragic. But he left quite a legacy. I mean, it makes you, you know, think about it because, you know, as we all age, you know, you start to think, you know, 56 is not really that old. That's still kind of young and he left so much material behind and did most of that um, material get developed So that's another reason why people need to go and see this film because they'll get to see images that have never been shown before and now they will have this opportunity to do this. Now, this film starts showing at the Film Forum on September 19th. How long will it run? It starts at 6 p.m. Okay, so folks need to you know, hurry up and get their tickets and uh, see this fabulous documentary of a a real New Yorker, someone who appreciated New York, as well as other parts um, of the world. You've already received some acknowledgments already for this film, correct? Okay, this is good. Are there any other um, visual exhibitions going on uh, that you know of, of Gary Winogrand, so that folks can also, um, if they can't physically get there, they can at least um, get some information online? Okay.
Okay, so folks also know that they can uh, delve into his other photographs uh, via uh, MoMA, uh, the Franco Gallery in San Francisco, so that they can learn more about him. I do encourage people to do so. Uh, we sometimes rush through life these days, and we don't take the time to just really explore. And with him, you could, because uh, I enjoyed looking at his photographs, you could spend a couple of hours just going through these various photographs and you learn so much it's not just that he took photographs it was his use of lighting and creating shadows in the right places so therefore the subject could pop uh, talking about the fact that he was interested in photography and making it um, as as good as possible all those various elements are, are very um, important I I always think of Alfred Hitchcock because Alfred Hitchcock was such a great filmmaker himself and it was all about detail it was all of his storyboarding first and then it was about how do you incorporate architecture so that you can continuously tell the story like stairwells and um, the moldings in certain buildings so that all of these little details added to the storytelling well I just wanted to say thank you so much Sasha that you we're spending some time with us. I know that you are still traveling and um, you made the time for us before you had to go to Italy. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. Um, so maybe because I'm I'm trying to see if I can um, uh, watch the film tomorrow evening. Um, maybe I might see you uh, there. I love going to Film Forum because they really go out of their way to showcase uh, Americana that we should not forget. And this is a person that should not be forgotten. And you too, uh, are you doing any other projects that we should be aware of before we end our conversation? All right, well, I just want to thank you so very, very much for joining us, and hopefully I'll get to... Okay, I'm going to try to make that one. So thank you so very much, Sasha, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. And uh, for our guests, um, we had another impactful conversation with a creative professional that we should all get to know and appreciate. Um, again, uh, Film Forum will be showing starting tomorrow the um, documentary Gary Winogrand all things are photographable and um, you can go online to read more about him we did a post on our site uh, on WordPress State of the Arts NYC and you can also see some additional photographs and his bio and we hope that you will um, join us back next week as we have more interesting guests for you, that's our hope to show you the behind the scenes side of the arts in uh, New York City and beyond. So um, look out for other um, uh, information on our Twitter and our Facebook page. Our handle is S-O-T-A-R-T-S-N-Y-C. That's the acronym for State of the Arts NYC. So this is your host, Savannah Bailey McLean, wishing you a wonderful art-filled week, and we will be back with you again. All right, then. Thank you so much.